Make back. some more noise. It's Usher. Come on, baddies. I'm good. How are you? Back for the first time. How you doing? <laughs> good. <laughs> Excited to have you. We call this the Girl Talk Table. Man, okay. Excited good. to have you at the Girl Talk Table. How you been doing? I feel honored to be able to sit as the representative of all men <laughs> at the Girl Talk Table. How y'all doing? Good, good, good. But y'all quiet. How y'all doing? <laughs> I think everybody's still shocked. Like, oh my gosh, Usher is at the Girl Talk Table. <laughs> like, we talk about you a lot at the Girl Talk Table, but to actually have you here, like, that's a different situation. Absolutely. We're happy to be here. Happy to have you. You have had a lot going on. I got to say congratulations. Halftime show, um, you got married, you dropped an album, you've gone on tour, you had the, 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 the residency. Congratulations on like everything that you, you've had going on these last few years and months. Yeah, it's been a lot, but uh, thank you. You're welcome. Uh, it, it's, it's, been, it's been a pleasure, you know yeah. what I'm saying, to have gone to Las Vegas when I did 100 shows ago. <laughs> and, um, you know, to then take that residency over to Paris, mm -hmm. come back to Las Vegas for the final uh, shows, um, and then, you know, to close it all out playing the Super Bowl. So really... Really happy, really happy to, to have had that incredible time in Las Vegas and then um, to be able to celebrate uh, my partner for life yeah, that's um, good. after the Super Bowl moment was great. Um, he took our nuptials, you know what I'm saying, decided to do this. You know, it became an incredible memory. The photos, yeah. I'm looking back at my little boy and girl and big boy and big boy. Yeah. And, and we all there in the drop top <laughs> as... Um, Elvis officiates us, you know what I'm saying? It was yeah, cool. That was, was a moment. Yeah, it was a great moment. Have you had a second to actually stop and smell your roses? I mean, you have been going and going. You've had this happening, that happening. Have you actually been able to stop and just process and let everything that's happened marinate? Yeah, um, I, I think I think I've been marinating a little long, you know, <laughs> uh, but enjoying it. But it, to be honest, it's it's a it's a real coming home for me, yeah. right? In addition to naming my album, Coming Home, to be able to have had that experience, to have been able to share Atlanta with the entire yeah. world, and then come back here to be able to celebrate, I'm happy to be home. Um, I really did enjoy my time in Las Vegas, but yeah. I'm really happy to be here back in the city, um, to be building here, to be with my family, mm -hmm. to be with you know my, my wife, to be with my kids. Yeah. Uh, to be with my mother, my brother, mm -hmm. and my other relatives and family, you know, and just to be back here. Um, and now uh, it's time to get back to work. How do you manage your 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 mental health and, and physical health during all of this? You're about to go on tour, past, present, and future. Yeah. The album is here. You just got finished doing the Super Bowl. You have the residency. How do you manage? How do you make sure that Usher's physical and mental well-being comes first because the only way you can give to others is if you take a second to make sure that you're pouring into yourself. I think you just said it. Ooh, okay. So yeah, that's it, right? Yeah. And um, you know, it's it's I especially in relationships because mm -hmm. you want to share each and every waking moment with that person. But to be honest, when you truly find love in yourself yeah. with yourself. You can then be happy with someone else. Mm -hmm. So to make certain that you don't look over that moment, even in a relationship or in a marriage, yeah. to be able to still have time alone. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I'm very fortunate to have a mate that allows me to still have my time alone. Mm -hmm. Rather, it's in the house. You know what I'm saying? I go yeah. to my corner. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you over just, here. She yeah, over here. Rather, I'm meditating or doing yoga yeah. or in the steam room or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I you, you have to manage to, because it's not just physical Mm -hmm. You said it's physical and mental. Yeah. The mental part is to be able to do something that is really about you, that you really want to do. I choose golf. You know what I'm saying? And you can go to Top Golf. You can actually go play golf. You can meditate. Meditation yeah. is sometimes a practice that needs to be taught. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. If you've never done it. But it's really about that alone time. You know? And rather you choose prayer, right? Yeah. Or whatever. You got to have this moment that's about self-reflection, being able to own the moments that have happened and be able to either thank God or thank yourself and, and, and encourage yourself. You got to have that alone time. You got to have that time by yourself um, and not just what the world has to pull from you or yeah. want from you or expect from you. Mm -hmm. You know, as a man who has a wife and also to have children, 
my family is constantly tugging at me mm-hmm. while I'm also also too still committed to my, yeah. my passion. But to be able to have moments to yourself, that's how you sustain it. Uh, and anybody, uh, no matter what level you're working at, you need to have moments to yourself. That's real. It's okay to be alone. That's real. Sometimes. You'll get yeah. back, you know. Please say that one more time because I don't think people understand that being alone Sometimes you got to have your me time, right? Mm, say that. Women at the girls' table, you know, the women talk table. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Come on. You need to have that alone time to reflect and make certain that you are right with self. Because sometimes you're trying to work something out that nobody else is going to understand. Mm, yeah. So maybe you need to understand it. Mm-hmm. It might sound a little lofty, but, you know, I think Issa Rae probably had something in, in mind when she was talking in, you know, insecurity at that yeah. mirror. Yeah. Working through whatever she was going through, right? Yeah. That's real. That's actually yeah. real in life. You need to have some alone time. So be okay with him having his alone time to go golf or <laughs> Ladies. Out with, yeah, chill. If you want to go and just relax, if you want to go smoke hookah, he need to go over, you know, just take his mind off of life. Yeah. And women, the same thing. If you need to go and have Bells. your moment, give her a spot and let her go get her nails done. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Just have your me time to get yourself yeah. together. So I want to talk about the tour a little bit. Okay. So I actually got to see the Vegas residency. I went in October okay. and you brought out Nas, which was a moment. Yeah. Absolutely love that. It is dope. As somebody who went to the residency, knowing that the tour is coming soon and very soon, um, how does the tour, how is the tour going to compare or differ from the residency? Every show is different. As you just said, mm. you know, there's many people who were probably jealous that they didn't get a chance to see right. Nas. But here's what I what I do allow. And with the tour, you know what I'm saying, everybody's bringing their phone. But in Las Vegas, it's not really appropriate to allow people to have phones, but I'm all about making certain yeah. that the world saw how much of an incredible thing that was happening in those rooms. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, um, every night's going to be different. Okay. Every market is going to be different. Okay. But here's what's beautiful. Um, I'm there for more than one night. Everywhere that I stop, Atlanta, I'm playing six nights. Barclay. Did you expect that you were going to have to do six nights in Atlanta? Because I feel like you dropped one day, that sold out. Dropped another day, that sold out. Dropped another day, that sold out. I'm like, look at God. At this point, are she going to be doing like 50 million look shows God. here? No, uh, yeah. Um, the idea was to do a residency style tour okay. because I kind of got accustomed uh, to being able to have that time um, in the market okay. in Vegas. But it gave me an opportunity to come in and out because I still have my responsibilities as a father. Yeah, You know, I still do domestic. I'm, I'm domesticated at home. <laughs> I'm cooking breakfast. I'm waking kids up. I'm screaming to come downstairs because we got five minutes to leave and we are already 10 minutes over the time. Mm-hmm. Um, but to be able to be in a market for longer than three, four days, mm-hmm gives you an opportunity to, to have, if you got more than one ticket, you're going to want more than one ticket. I promise you. Don't say that. Uh, uh, it, no, I'm telling you. I'm I'm, I'm just telling you. It's Earth Because I was brother. like 2.5 seconds from I, by. I was I was going to go to Vegas again. I am the party, baby. I'm like. <laughs> you're going to enjoy yourself. I, I want to make certain that you understand I have put in this work for you. You understand what I'm saying to you? It's, you know, it's, you know, <laughs> it's inflation. Like, yeah, I know. I know. <sighs> You may buy another ticket. Yeah, but there might be other experiences and engagements that um, I'm going to have around. Um, okay. One thing that people um, did get a chance to benefit uh, from in Vegas is I created um, these immersive experiences okay. that happened before the show. Yeah. Sometimes during the show, there were tickets that opened up that were like special seats that I created mm-hmm. uh, just because there you know, was someone who wanted to be able to see a different side. You know, I got an I have an idea around um, touring in a different way. People always look at the stage, but they don't always get a chance to experience all of it. I got some really fun things that I'm working on that are gonna allow, maybe some people who didn't get a ticket or either tried to get their ticket a little bit too Mm -hmm. late. I might have an option for you, you know what I'm saying? Listen, you gonna get my (laughs) money again. You gonna get my money again. What was your favorite part of of the residency? Like looking at it, Curated. From a like whole, just the curation of it to be able to do it, you know, because I really feel like there is an underserved uh, market, mm-hmm. you know, and you know there is 
um, this idea of how we've now grown accustomed to having experiences looking on social media. Nobody, well, not everybody, somebody still does want to go out and have an experience. Right. So what was beautiful about it is that you made a commitment to get on a plane. Well, first of all, you got in the car, either Uber, right? I did. A Lyft. I and did. you got to the airport. I did. I did. You know what I'm saying? And then you got through the airport. Yeah. You got on a plane. Did got off the plane. You, yeah, you went through all of that for me, Listen, right? I did. So it, so it was really up to me mm -hmm. to be mindful of how much of an effort people put in to get to me. So I was like, yo, I want to make certain that this is an experience that you will never forget. So I, I put that much time, thought, Listen. and energy into making certain that, that, that it's, a, it's, a, it's a memory. I got to thank you for that because when I tell you, Bring your girls. I had a <laughs> hell of a time. You came with your girls or you came by yourself? So it was me and my best friend. Okay. She has okay. three girls who just had a new baby and she just needed to get away. Okay. We love you. So I brought it up. I'm like, hey, let's go see Usher. She's like, okay, great. The entire time we were up singing, dancing. I came home hoarse. Because that's just how into the show. And it wasn't just me. Like, I'm looking around and everybody around me is like, hush, hush. like, <laughs> we are just having a great time. So thank you, because that literally was a memory and is a memory for me and my best friend. Like, she went home. I mean, her husband texted her a few times during the show, like, did Usher come near you? You good? I'm like, yo, she's fine. <laughs> what stays in Vegas? What happens in Vegas stays, stays in Vegas. Vegas. No. Um, but no, it was a it was a great show. And then to have Nas come out, yeah, like that, I was, I was stop playing with the girls. Yeah. Did you pick up the phone and call people and say like, hey, can you come do this with me? Or did people just randomly say like, I want to come? It was a little bit of both. Sometimes okay. people would want to come see the show, and I would and I would just suggest like, yo, I want to open the stage to you. You know, many times we we get caught up and consumed with trying to be the best and we don't open our arms, mm. especially on R&B, it's always been about that. It's yeah. sometimes been an improv. You can go to a show and if there's a live band there and somebody's in the audience, I remember when Diana Ross, I'm looking at it now in, in, in previous times, we'll see Michael Jackson in the audience and say, come up on yeah. stage and they perform it upside down. I'm yeah. like, that right there, that that is missing. So I, I would offer the same thing to each and every person, rather, you know, they were, it, it didn't matter who it was. Um, if you want to, speak to this audience you should because this music is a celebration what we've done and what we are keeping alive is about sharing it's about allowing each and every one of us to shine in a moment that allows us to have a great time that is what this type of performance r&b pop whatever you want to call it yeah. you want to categorize it but that is what entertainment is about being in the moment and allowing people to to feel something that they never felt and they probably just have as a memory now we have a fan, you know, a phone to be able to record it, yeah. but it has always been about trying to make and elevate the moment to be something that people are going to remember, you know? Yeah. Usher Raymond sitting down at the girl talk table, want to yeah. get into another new song off the album Coming Home. Yeah. Risk It All. Risk It All, oh, man. Love that song. So um, I'm really, really close with uh, Jill Scott. She's a really great friend of mine. She calls me last night. She was like, boy... Boy, you know how she do that. Right? She's <laughs> that risk it all. Oh my God, on replay. Listen, I was like, I really appreciate it. It is a special one. Um, you know, with uh, the color purple, mm -hmm. and and being able to be associated with that incredible project, uh, it gave us an opportunity to 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 introduce to the entire world, the world that loves this music, and also to the world that loves. Um, theatrical uh, interpretations of yeah. classic moments. Y'all should, if you ain't seen Color Purple, you should see it. You know, amazing performances by all the amazing actors that we love. But uh, Risk It All with her. Uh, we did this one. It was a special one. Um, she sent me this song. Uh, really? Just to give you a little backstory. Yeah, she sent me this song because we're friends. Okay. And I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm transparent with, with my friends. I'll send a record that no one has ever heard and say, yeah, what you think about this? So she sent me one. I was like, this song is incredible. Do you mind if we do it together? She was like, sat on it for a little while. Mm -hmm. I surrounded it and went ahead and kind of performed it already. Yeah. This is this app where you can take everybody's vocal out. <laughs> I went ahead and sang it. I didn't tell her, but then I sent it back to her like, this is what we should do. Mm -hmm. And that became Risk It All featuring her. Let's check it out, y'all. 
when I tell you I love that song, like I absolutely love that song. Like you. you and her together, I don't know if this is something that you've ever thought about or that she's thought about, but y'all need to do like a project or something together because the way your voices blend together. That's a good idea. Like it's. Would y'all like that? <sighs> oh my goodness. Okay. Like the minute I heard it and I told Derek this, I'm like, they need to do more together. Yeah. Like it, simply amazing. One of my favorite songs out now, but I would honestly have to say of all time. Like that's just how great you two sound wow. together. Well, thank you. Well, you so know what? Something to think about. Let me thank her. Her. <laughs> <laughs> Literally. You can't spell Usher without her. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> okay. Uh, all right. But so, man. <laughs> <laughs> the new album, Coming Home, is out. Usher, you have been able to withstand the test of time, and not a lot of artists can do that. Like, you drop an album, you let us marinate on the album, then you'll drop another album, you let us marinate on that album. I mean, like, it's 25 plus years. And you keep being able to resonate with different ages, different genres. What is, and if you don't want to share it, perfectly fine. What is the secret sauce to staying relevant? How has Usher been able to stand the test of time? I really love it. Mm. I really love what I do as an entertainer. I love music. Um, I love the history of what it has been and all the incredible artists that have made uh, music that inspired me so much so that I want to continue to to be that to other mm -hmm. artists so until I can't sing anymore I want to yeah until I can't think of creative ideas and find ways to write things that become something that could be helpful to somebody whether you're going through heartache mm -hmm. or you're going through celebration um it's just my love my love for it that I really um I want to make things that people like I want to make things that people will play you know, I think that some of the greatest moments in life are celebrated in some of the most incredible songs. Mm -hmm. So um, it is the soundtrack to the life that we're living. Uh, not just the books that we read or the movies that we watch. Those songs, they they assist us all in some way. Whether you listen to the songs and you're like, man, I'm getting through this hard time right now. Mm -hmm. Or I'm just really, this giving me the game that I need to be able to spit <laughs> to this girl. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. it is the soundtrack. And I'm just... I'm in love with it. I'm in love with music. I fell in love with music before I fell in love with anything. Mm -hmm. And um, it's a it's a it's a healthy relationship. <laughs> listen, keep loving it because honey, uh, listen, period. Okay. Love you more. Every time you drop an album, I'm like, how is this man doing it? Like, did he just drop another banger again? Like, oh, come yeah. on, Usher. What would Usher today, sitting here, say to 1994 Usher. Let's say he was sitting on the opposite side of me. What would you say to him? Um, what would I say to me? In 1994. In 1994. Uh, bet you can't do it like me. Good night. <laughs> <laughs> uh, nah, you know what? I would, I would, I would say, you know, stay, stay on this same track, man. And you know, the truth is that. Your commitment, because I know where you're going to land because I'm here, but mm -hmm. yo, your commitment is one that's worth it. Um, I wish sometimes I did have like that male influence to be able to have said that to me, but yeah. I wasn't. Um, where I may have had cousins, I had you know mm -hmm. some mentors, but I didn't have a dad or a yeah. father to say, hey, you should stay with this because this is something that works yeah. for you. I made a decision at a very young age that this is what I would do. And I stay committed to it. Yeah. So I would say to young Usher, Ursha, um, man, stay committed because it's going to, it's going to, I know I don't have to tell you this because you're going to do it anyway. It's going to pay off. I know who you are, man. But yo, you know, enjoy, this is what I would say. Enjoy the moments that you're having now mm. um, because I'm just now beginning to enjoy all the work that you're going to put in. Oh. So, um, Ooh. yeah. Yes. Mm. I would say drop the mic, but I got more questions to ask. So don't drop it just yet. Um, from the outside looking in, it looks like everything that somebody could do, you've done. Super Bowl halftime, sold out arenas multiple times. Uh, you've won awards. You have been in a number of movies. I mean, the resume is just thick. What else is on Usher's 
bucket list. I had a friend call it a joy list. She said, like, after 35, we start we stop calling it bucket list. So what else is on Usher's joy list? Joy list. Because it looks like, honestly, Usher, you done done everything. The, yeah. the residency, like, what else is there left for Usher to do? Uh, I mean, there's some really creative things that I could think of. Okay. Um, But... I, I would say that I hope that whatever is intended for me to have in time, I will. Um, and that, you know, that whatever I choose to do, that people love it. Um, I want to make things outside of music that people have a connection to. I want. I love that I've been able to be a storyteller through music, but I would love to do, you know, other things. And I would love to, that's why I choose to, you know, reach into other industries or try to start other businesses and try to do other things because, you know, I fell in love with storytelling. Mm -hmm. So now being able to storytell through wardrobe and fashion, being able to storytell through, you know, maybe a product, mm -hmm. be able to storytell through an experience, a restaurant, a business, a nightclub, a residency that I actually own, a casino that maybe someday I own. I am a dreamer. Yeah. So, um... I think that there's a lot of things that I would like to do, mm -hmm. um, but what I would love to do more than anything is be a great example for somebody in my past. Uh, in my, in my, sorry, I would love to be an example to someone in the future. Um, we only have a short amount of time, even though life seems long. Yeah. And more than often, we then give people their flowers and we recognize them when they're gone. I would hope that. Um, you know, what I am setting as an example is something that will encourage people when I'm gone. That's it. It seems, you know, you know, maybe lofty to even think like to do something. Hey, you played the Super Bowl. I've never walked on the stage and actually received an, a Grammy. I've won one, but mm -hmm. I've never literally walked on the stage. That really bothers me. Are you serious? I've never walked on the stage and received a Grammy. I, his was crazy. I've actually won for a best male vocal performance in a time when I think vocal performance was very important because we were then synthesizing music and becoming like, it was less about the tone mm -hmm. and the, you know, the arpeggio and the articulation of runs and all of that stuff, right? And then they did away with that category. Mm. So I'm like, well, okay. So I guess I'm never gonna get a chance to walk on the stage and be recognized for the thing and the reason why we actually are here, which is our voices. Mm. Mm. So I hope that someday I get that. I would love to be able to walk on the stage and receive a Grammy. Yeah. Uh, the Grammys? Yeah. Get it together. And that's on period. So we are moving into an election season, and I think it's important that um, men with influence talk about um, you know, their experience with voting and why voting is important. So um, just want to know, do you remember your first time voting and how did that feel? I remember my first time ever um, encouraging people to vote. It was my mother and we were in Chattanooga, Tennessee, and they uh, have um, voting booths for local officials at uh, the gymnasium in Washington Hills. And something about that had... Um, has led to conversations that I ended up having with kids from my uh, 501c3 New Look. And they and I came up with this idea called I Can't But You Can. Mm -hmm. Because they couldn't, but the decisions that are being made from local officials and in our world, state to state, um, are affecting our lives. Yeah. So the importance of voting um, being a priority to them, it was so beautiful. It was so beautiful to see them go out. And I saw myself in them because I was <laughs> that same kid who had to talk to adults like, I can't, but you can go in there and vote. You should do it. Yeah. So we came up with this idea called I Can't But You Can through the New Look Foundation. Um, I've been thinking about uh, re-engineering it in this time yeah. um, because it's important. Uh, what, your, what your decision is is on you when you yeah. are in that booth. But... Um, to not stand up and be counted um, is not an option, mm -hmm. um, especially for so many people who advocated, died for that right for us to be able to utilize this voice and be counted for one vote. Mm -hmm. uh, so one, do it. It might seem as though it's an inconvenience for the day, but make time. Yeah. 
uh, to be able to do that because there's so many people that died for this opportunity for us to have this voice. Let's not take it for granted. Absolutely love it. ATL, baddies, put your hands together. Usher Raymond, sitting down at the girl talk table. Usher, thank you. That's so a, wait, hold on. That's how y'all feel about y'all self. He, she said baddies. There's a whole bunch of baddies in here. Y'all better make more noise for yourself. So, so listen, I have definitely enjoyed this time to be able to talk to y'all. We're gonna keep this party going all night. We're gonna go to Cascade tonight and Ooh. skate. So if you listen, then you should come skate with me. We're gonna then go to R and B Wednesdays with Keith and B Cox and Sue and Dave. Yeah, that's right. We're gonna turn up tonight and um yeah that's right we're gonna skate and then we're going r&b wednesdays so 